everybody, welcome back to Recordology. All right, we've got a fun show for you tonight. Kind of keeping with my recent theme of combining shows into these sort of mega mini shows where we do a couple different topics not necessarily related to each other, we are going to do a couple of things. We're gonna do a top three dream records, records that I would love to find in the wild, could I find them on eBay? Yeah, probably. Are they really valuable? Not necessarily, but they are kind of what I'm looking for, at least right now. So in a year from now, that may be completely different, but what I share with you, sort of the top three records that I would love to find. Then we're gonna do a really cool segment of an unboxing of a couple of viewer submitted packages. Recently, I was gifted some amazing records, quite a few of them, and I wanted to share that with you. We're gonna go through that. And then finally, I'm gonna give you a very short blurb on how you got blocked. If you are blocked on my channel, why that happened, how that happened, perhaps what you could do to fix that situation and sort of how the comments and the approvals work behind the scenes for those of you that care and if you don't that's totally cool too but i'm just glad you are here so you're not going to want to miss this this is recordology so for those of you that saw the last show the first thing you're thinking is thank goodness he's not a cartoon it's amazing how many people really don't like that <laughs> And I, I guess it's kind of weird. I was just doing it for fun. My wife's like, why don't you do your intro and outro as a cartoon tonight? And I'm like, okay, why not? Let's do it. So some people were really not okay with that. And that makes me laugh. So what I want to do now is share with you the top three records that I'm looking for, my dream records at the moment, and why. You know what I mean? Why is this what I'm looking for? This is very individualized. So I get it. I doubt that any of these will be on any of your list necessarily. Actually, that's good if they're not. That way, there, there's more of a likelihood that I'll pick them up. Uh, but what I really want you to be thinking about while I'm talking through this is what are your, that's where I'm talking to you, what, let's see if I can do that better, I'm talking to you, what are your dream records? What are you looking for right now? Uh, but here are my top three records. And again, this may change at any moment. Number three, radio transcription discs. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, Aren't those radio transcription discs? Yes, those are our 16 inch AFRN radio transcription discs that I could almost, almost, and I mean like within millimeters, almost play on my LP7, but alas, I cannot quite fit them on there. So we did a little modification with the Crosley um, Revolution and another turntable, and we rigged up a way to sample each one. Check out that show if you haven't already. But I, I'm probably gonna have to modify, you know, and you know, create my own turntable to play those on, because transcription disc record players are expensive. The, be the best likelihood is finding an old Caliphone from the 70s with a 16-inch arm. But again, I should maybe add that to the list too, like top three record players I'd like to see. That's a future show for a future day. But we're here to talk about the records. So. Every time I go into an antique store, an antique mall, I'm thinking to myself, what if this is the day I come across like a, um, a bunch of transcription discs? I would love that. Like, a, like, you know, who knows? Even if they're unlabeled, that'd be even more exciting to find out what is on it. It's kind of like finding a big box of reel-to-reel -reel tape that's not labeled. You know, are you going to come across some, you know, lost Elvis master or something that hasn't been discovered? I think that'd be really, really cool. So, um, same thing with the transcription disc. I've never come across one in the wild. I've ne My wife had pity on me, and she surprised me with these two. They came from uh, a different website. And I uh, got an amazing deal on those, and you know, I'm proud to have them, and I can't wait to listen to them in their entirety one day because the historic nature, very, very, very cool. These are, one of them, like, tail end of World War II. The other one's, I think, 1949. Um, but both very, very cool. So, I'm always on the lookout for that. Now, number two, and these aren't really in order, they're just, it, YouTube likes things listed, so we're gonna, for the purpose of the uh, almighty algorithm, we are going to do a top three, but really these share, you know, prevalence and, you know, seniority, so to speak. Number two is, you guys know I've been really getting into Patsy Cline and learning about her music and her story, and her first album, 1957, self-titled album, 
I would love to find this. Now, it's fairly rare because it flopped. It didn't do so good. This first album came out in 1957. She had been working under Four Star Records, which licensed all their content to DECA. Uh, in her case, they didn't do that for everybody. There are Four Star Records that have a Four Star Record label. But they put them together and they released this self-titled LP in 1957. And I would love to find it. If I came across this in the wild, that would be awesome. I would love to find that. I think that would be very, very cool. And then number one is a V-Disc. I have yet to find, now I know the V-Disc Daddy has a bunch of content. For those that don't know, a V-Disc was created, it was a program created during World War II where popular music artists of the day would go into the studio or they would use pre-release commercial recordings and send those to the troops overseas oftentimes for them to just have music. And the thing is, is the, the uh, artists did it royalty free. They didn't make any money on that. They were volunteering their art, their time, and those recordings. So there's no royalties to be made off of VDIS. They were just for the troops to enjoy in camp or on base. And, you know, they made, you know, tons and tons and tons of these. And uh, the ones that have very unique uh, recordings that did not reuse the commercial recordings are very special because it's the only time that was ever heard. Now, the U.S. government ordered that all V-Discs be destroyed after World War II. They didn't want them getting into the private sector. They didn't want people hoarding them, collecting them, owning them. In fact, it was a crime to own them because they didn't want records out there that weren't earning royalties for the artists. However, thankfully in the long run, some people had a stash and there are a decent amount of V-Discs out there, but they're still rare enough that you're not likely to come across them in the wild and I surely have not and I would love to. Glenn Miller did a lot of very, very unique uh, recordings and uh, not only uh, dedicated recordings for the VDIS program, but also re-released some of his commercial sides. But what was really unique is oftentimes these records contained special messages from the artist to the troops. So it's a really special thing to find a V-Disc and I want, I want to find one. That was the list. So there are the records that I would love to find, but enough about me. Tell me about you. What kind of records are you looking for? Or maybe what record are you looking for? What's the number one record that you're looking for right now? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, now let's unbox some records that were gifted to me, which happened to include one that was on my list until I received this package. When I open up the mailbox and I see a key, which means that there's something, because we have a small mailbox, a post office box is small, but when we open it and there's a key in there, which means there's something in one of the lock boxes, and then I open the lock box and I see one, not one, but two boxes and they're addressed to recordology i get so excited and i mean like christmas morning excited <laughs> like you guys are awesome i am so appreciative that anybody would take the time and expense to actually send stuff and i was blown away totally not expecting anything and you know you've done it again and so thank you in advance we've got two packages here from two different viewers it's like so excited like very excited so thank you so very much and let's find out together what we got let me know too in the comments below do you prefer if i do the unboxings as you know standalone episode this is where you gotta be really careful or do you prefer if they're done you know as part of another episode I'm always playing around with the best way to do it. I know some people really hate unboxing videos just in general, and others love them. I love them. I mean, I like to to, to see that. I, uh, to me, in a, a reveal of any, and you know, I always say too when we're unboxing a product reveal, and I'm like, you know, this is the big reveal, the big moment. You know, it's exciting stuff. So anyway, let me know down in the comments below how we should do this or what your thoughts are on unboxings. Okay. Here we go. I have no idea. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over because I think I did it backwards. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, so I, I just read the letter that came with it. It's from uh, Avatar610. I'm not sure if you want me to use your real name, so I'm not going to. And uh, he 
found some cool things that he knows that I'm going to love. And he is right. I can't wait to, you know, reveal them to you in a second here. But I will respond uh, to your, let's see, I, I don't know if I have your email or not, but there's a couple of questions that you had for me. So let me open the records here and maybe I will respond in this video. So here we go. You ready, guys? Oh, that's right. Glenn Miller. This is so awesome. This is part of the 70s complete Glenn Miller uh, set that Bluebird put out. They did all of the Glenn Miller ones. And they did, I think, part of the Tommy Dorsey ones. And this is the one and only time that all of Glenn Miller's studio recordings were released. And they reissued the, um, the these recordings in the 1990. This is the booklet from the 1990 Complete Glenn Miller and his orchestra, the Complete Bluebird recordings, um, which used the same tape masters that were made. They were made in the 70s off of the metal parts, which even by the 70s were deteriorated considerably. So this is great. Thank you so much. I do not have, I only have like two or three in this set. They're fairly rare, but they, they, they have this wonderful, beautiful Bluebird electrically recorded label, which is very reminiscent of one of the Bluebird labels that was on the 78 RPM records. So this is great. Thank you so very much. And I don't know what the next one is yet. So this is going to be a surprise for both of us. Cool. Tex Beneke. Okay. So Tex Beneke was in the Glenn Miller Orchestra. He was the first saxophone. And in, in, in the mood, the sax battle is between him and Al Klink, who was another one of the uh, sax members. He went on to lead the Glenn Miller Orchestra in the late 40s from 1945 to 1950 and then he had a prolific prolific career in his own right leading his own big band and that is awesome so this is super cool let's take a look at the record itself oh cool on a, on a very typical sort of 80s 70s mca yep 82 uh, i remember my dad had a lot of that label i love this label i think it's a cool one so that's great thank you so very very much with Ray Eberly, Marion Hutton, and the Modern Airs. So this is a reunion recording. Awesome. And then, what is, oh, this is a quadraphonic. This is great. Yeah, he said in the letter that he was including a quadraphonic. So this is Andre Castellanat. Cost, Andre Castellanat. Hey, Google, how do you pronounce K-O-S-T-E-L-A-N-E-T-Z? Andre Castellanitz. That's how Google's saying to pronounce it. But this is a quadraphonic record. We have done one or two quadraphonic records, but this is super special. If you don't know, quadraphonic, that was actually four-channeled surround sound stereo that was sort of a miss that, you know, came out in the 70s. This is Columbia. Very, very cool. Columbia is probably my second favorite record label. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Thank you for thinking of me. I wanted to address a couple of your questions really, really quick. Um, have I seen Orchestra Wives? Yes, I have. Many times I have it on tape. I did not see it on TCM the other day. I've seen it on YouTube multiple times, and I had, like I said, the VHS tape. What would Glenn Miller have done after the war had he not gone missing? I believe that he would have followed a similar suit to uh, Lawrence Welk. I think he would have gone for the older demographic and i think that he would have gone into television and speaking of fox films that's you know the soundtracks to the glenn miller movies the two of them that he made since some of the music was recorded on multi-track have the soundtracks ever been mixed to stereo and released on lp or cd in that configuration the question is yes they're actually recorded in optical film the first time the glenn miller orchestra was able to be recorded in something longer than the three and a half minutes that a set uh, than a 10 inch uh, record dictated at the time so the movies have much higher fidelity in their sound quality as well as the ability to record longer times so they have released some cds that uh, take the different pickup mics that were used with the various parts of the orchestra to create a uh, uh, a stereo image of sorts and they've been released in a couple of different configurations the most notable of which was a couple of years ago they released, and it's still kind of pricey, a CD where they went back and meticulously recreated a true audiophile product from those 
various microphones. Even the regular releases of the soundtrack albums have phenomenal, phenomenal sound quality. So, Avatar 610, thank you so very, very much. But, my friends, we are not done because we have yet another box to open. The next package is from George in Baltimore. Thank you so much, George. This is a big box. It doesn't look like it's quite big enough to hold a 12-inch album. So I'm guessing that we've got either 10-inch, perhaps 78s, or maybe 7-inch records in here. But it is a very thick box. The weight isn't too substantial. I'm assuming everything's packed really, really well. So I'm really excited to get into this. I want to open this from the right side up. So let me go ahead and cut open the seals and sort of peel it back and we'll take a look. So I have not opened these flaps. The anticipation, the anticipation, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. What do we have here? Okay, these are 12 inch records. Interesting packing job, I like it. Wow, okay, cool. I see Andy Williams there. So what we need to do now this is the most creative packaging job I've ever seen. You literally fit 12 inch records in a box with dimensions smaller than 12 inches. So, oversized knife, yeah, I didn't mention that earlier, but it's like a three inch knife. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay, so we got a plastic bag here with some expertly applied tape. Awesome, I'm already seeing some exciting stuff in here. Okay, this is awesome. Thank you so very, very much. All right, it's a stack of 12 inch records. This is exciting. Thank you so much. First up, we have Andy Williams. What is this music from Schubert Alley? This is good, good stuff. I love this kind of music. This is sort of like Tin Pan Alley. Look at this, Sinclair Dealer Stations, from NBC TV, November 3rd. 13th 1959 oh this is cool different performers there this is awesome stuff exciting i cannot wait to check this out look at that label i've never seen that sinclair that is awesome i used to remember as a kid seeing the sinclair stations with the dinosaur out front next we have bix beaterbeck story bix and tram he was very very big in the early big band slash jazz era and this is cool. I do not, I don't think I have, do I have any of his music? I'm not sure. Nice, we've got a Columbia Six Eye. So that'll be fun learning about and checking that out. And yes, I do read all this copy. My, we were having that age old discussion today in the car with, with our son saying, talking about the benefit of, you know, vinyl and physical media over digital streaming. And I was talking about liner notes. And he's like, do you ever read the liner notes? I'm like, absolutely, I'm the guy that does. Awesome, Patty Page, Tennessee Waltz, there it is. You know, when I started listening to Patsy Cline recently, I thought that that was her song. I thought that must be Patsy Cline, but no, it's Patty Page. And a lot of people covered it. Even Patsy Cline recorded it, or didn't record it, she did it on the radio. There is a recording, which is really cool because she actually screws up and you know says some of the words wrong. But this is great music, Patty Page. I've got a set of Patty Page on 45 somewhere back here and but no lps and i don't have a lot of this material and i so far haven't had tennessee waltz which is sort of the number one patty page song in my opinion so look at the oh what we got a record snuck in here there's a couple snuck in here but first look at that there's the mercury label and the records hiding in the sleeve here this is exciting stuff let me put patty page back this looks like a new sleeve. Awesome, it's a tight fit. Come on, Patty Page, go back in there. Okay. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Disneyland Records, two of them. That is awesome. We got Robin Hood, Alice in Wonderland. This is so cool, thank you so much. This is so nice of you to think of me and to think of the channel. Definitely gonna get a lot of mileage out of this stuff. This is great, this is so great. Excellent, very exciting. Next up we have the best of the big band sound with Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, Harry James, Glenn Gray, Les Brown. Awesome stuff, this is cool. Yeah, this is great. Pink Panther theme by Benny Goodman? I don't even know he did a version of that. 
I didn't even know he did that. This is great. Really cool. Awesome. Can't wait to check that out. And here we have another Bix Beaterbeck. Awesome. This is number one. The other one was volume two. So now I've got both, which is very, very cool. I cannot wait. He sort of predates the big band era a little bit. He's sort of like mid to late 20s. Whereas big band, that, that you know genre really is considered to have started in 1937 when um, Benny Goodman had his famous uh, Carnegie Hall concert. Camelot. Oh, this is great. This is one of my favorite Broadway shows. This is great. This is so cool. Look at this. I love the gatefold record. This is so cool. Look at this. With Julie Andrews, Richard Burton. It was because of Julie Andrews' performance in this Broadway show, which Walt Disney saw, that got her the job as Mary Poppins in the Hollywood, or the Hollywood, in the Walt Disney production of Mary, of Mary Poppins, 1963, I believe. And Julie Andrews was took some convincing because she really wasn't, you know, thinking that that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to be in My Fair Lady. But when uh, she didn't get that role, she's like, okay, I'll do this uh, Disney thing. But this was what that was all based on. This is super cool. Thank you so much. And next we have Music for Bachelors by Henry Rene and his orchestra. Was that not the guy that we just talked about the other day on that 45? What do we got here? Easy to love. I'm confessing. Awesome. This is great. Henry Rene and his orchestra. I think, I think that's who that was. I am going to look. I think that would be just too odd if that's... Yep, this record. Do you remember we looked at this the other day? It is. Henry Rene. And you, there's no way that you could have known this when you sent this record that I had just picked this and we had talked about it. That is awesome. I've done a little bit of research since this video and you guys told me that it is international. And that is, this must be the international uh, color RCA Victor 45s. And that he sort of had a kind of a big band, kind of a Lawrence Welk theme, but international audience as a primary audience. So, all right, guys, thank you so very much for thinking of the channel, thinking of me. And this has just been awesome. So thank you very, very much. That was awesome. I am so grateful. When I open the mailbox and I see a key in there, it's like Christmas morning. I am, you know, never expected, but so grateful, you know, when you guys send anything. So switching gears completely, um, I want to talk about my blocked list. You may be saying block list. What are you talking about? So early days in this channel, 2017, when I started it, I said to myself, I am going to have a completely open forum in terms of the comments because YouTube allows you to filter all comments where everyone needs to be manually approved. You can have the Wild West where you know, every comment gets instantly posted, or you can have certain keywords that trigger you know, it going into a hold pattern so you can make sure you know, nobody's self-promoting on your channel, putting in questionable links, or you know, you know, doing you know, behavior that's not appropriate for, uh, for, the, for the channel. So at the very beginning, I was pretty open on everything. I'm just like, just let it go. I, I, I knew I was going to catch a lot of, uh, let's just call it um, altering points of view based on this channel's position as being friendly and supportive as it continues to be of entry-level equipment, including Victrola, Crosley. We call it like we see it. You know, we've got no prejudice whatsoever on this channel. If Crosley makes a good turntable, which they have many, many times, we say it. If Audio Technica makes a good one many, many times, we say it. If somebody makes a POS, we say it. And we have done it. We're honest, but we are not going to detract people, especially people who are just getting into this. You see people being mean to kids and whatnot. And I was like, this channel, I don't want it to be like that. I don't want people who are more experienced in vinyl to cause people any grief. And this is such an individualized thing. You could talk to 100 people that have been doing this for 100 years and you'll get 100 different opinions on the right way to do everything. In other words, you're wrong no matter what you do and, and I have been that way. So anyway, what started happening in early days is there was all kinds of, there was a lot of dissension on the channel, which I don't mind, but it got nasty. It got really nasty. I don't want to go into that right now. So I said to myself, what we need to do is we need to create some, there has to be boundaries here. So I created a list of keywords that would trigger comments 
you know, obviously cuss words and, you know, things that people are often saying that would, you know, trigger comments to go into the queue where I could delete them and I could, you know, approve the ones that were nice. So because of that, and that's the way we operate to this day. So if you post a comment and it doesn't show up, you hit submit or whatever, okay, or whatever it says, and then it disappears. I, I remember before I learned how this worked, I used to think, oh my gosh, what happened? There's a glitch. I have to, so they enter the comment like three times. No, I get it. I definitely get it. It may take me a day or two to get around to it, but it likely, for whatever reason, ended up in a queue, either because of the list of you know trigger words we have on there or because YouTube and all of its infinite wisdom uh, decided to throw it into a queue. So just be patient. It'll, it'll show up, you know, assuming it doesn't violate any of YouTube's, you know, terms and conditions and expectations or mine. And what are mine? What, do you, what are yours? There are some YouTubers out there that don't want any dissension. They don't want anybody to disagree with them. They want it to look like the whole world agrees with them. And that's definitely not me. In fact, I welcome dissension. I welcome polite, cordial discord. Discourse. Not Discord. Discord is, a, is an app. Discourse. So if somebody wants to tell me, and they do, you know, how I could improve my understanding of a situation or a product, you know, then educate me. I've learned way more from you guys than I have, you know, taught other people things. And as such, my understanding and education has evolved over time. So I am totally, totally fine with that. And I'm happy for that. So if you want to tell me uh, something, if you want to share how I was incorrect, which I often am, admittedly, then feel free to do it. You're not going to get blocked for that. You're not going to get any heat. Definitely allow those comments. But if you start cussing, not just at me, but at each other, if you start getting nasty, if you start making fun of people, if you're just, you know, having a lot of hateful dialogue there, then there's no reason for that. Typically what I do is a one strike and you're out kind of a policy. So I'll usually just delete comments that are, you know, dumb. And if, if I get a repeat offender, then I will block them. And once you're blocked, you're gone. You're never coming back. You're never coming back, at least under that username. I don't even know if I could undo or unblock people, but I'm not interested in it. I have a massive, and I mean, this thing must be five digits of people. Got to be... 10,000 or more. Uh, 10,000, is that excessive? There's thousands. Let me just say that. There's thousands of people that are on my block list. And they're never, ever going to see the light of day on my channel. They can watch the videos all they want. Please do. But they're not going to get to, you know, they've lost their privilege. You know, they were you know behaving badly. If that is you, uh, I would encourage you to uh, maybe, you know, comment with a different username. And uh, that's sort of your way to get back in. And again, if you are respectful and you have no issue, um, and again, feel free to tell me how I'm wrong. Uh, let's just keep it cordial. Let's just keep it polite. There'll be no problem whatsoever. And if there is, then you'll be blocked again. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to let you know. Sorry I went six minutes on that. I just wanted to let you know how that works. A lot of people asked me, so I thought I would mention it. But anyway, enough of that. Let's focus on the good, the positive, and uh, you guys are awesome. I love you guys, and I really appreciate you being there from, you know, day one, 2017 to, you know, here we are in 2021 as the recording of this, and I just can't believe it. You know, met friends on here, uh, a lot of great acquaintances, I've had a lot of correspondence with people, and uh, I just appreciate you being here, making time for this video in your busy week. So, God bless each and every one of you, stay safe out there, take care of each other, be thankful, be appreciative as I am of you. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time.